And so there is need for us to rise to the occasion and begin to manage our thought life so that we can get rid of toxic thinking. And Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 tells us the kind of things that we need to put in. Whatsoever things are love. Whatsoever things are praiseworthy. Yes. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are of good report. These are eight principles which if we embrace then our thinking becomes blameless. And so it is an invitation to what I can call critical thinking. Because if you are a critical thinker, there are certain things that are beyond your dig dignity that you want to. Yes. You need to think about everything before you do it. What is critical thinking? Critical thinking is thinking about what you are thinking while you are still thinking. Why would you be thinking about what you are thinking while you are still thinking? You are thinking about what you are thinking while you are still in the process of thinking in order to stop certain things in time. In order to make your thinking better. Why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12 I wisdom dwell together with prudence and I give knowledge with discretion. Now if you read all the way to verse 14, then you will discover that there are pillars which wisdom gives in building your life. Prudence manifested in the form of insight. Insight. And this insight is what Job chapter 38 verse 36 talks about which says, God gives intuition to the heart and instinct to the mind. Now, a great pastor who is a scholar of leadership by the name of John Maxwell, apart from saying that leadership is about influence, nothing more and nothing less, he also says, a leader, and you are leaders, transformational leaders, Agents of change. Remember this? He says a leader must do what? Must reflect the law of intuition. The law of intuition. What is intuition? Intuition is a gifting which is sharpened by the Holy Spirit to enable you have a high sense of discernment. To have a high sense of perceptiveness. And there are situations that need you to nip in the bud and maintain control. Because you have insight and you are intuitive. Whether you are a parent in your home, whether you are a classroom in the teacher, or whether you are an officer out there engaging people for social transformation for national transformation. You need to have your skills of insight, intuition, and perceptiveness and training. That enables you to steer well. In fact, it brings about what is called concurrent control. Some of us, our lives are losing balance. And we are walking into temptations and trials and problems with our eyes open because we don't perceive. <laughs> what we need? We need intuition. As a husband, to deal with your wife well, you need intuition. But sometimes women are more gifted in intuition than their husbands. <laughs> and perhaps because women are more prayerful. They cry out, they have no shame in tears coming down. If David said in Psalm chapter 56 verse 8, are my tears not recorded in your book? Are they not in your bottle? Tears are useful because they are the language of the soul. 
and, and positions himself and his economic goal. My plea to you, graduates, even as the county education department considers employing some of you, may you demonstrate a high degree of economic frugality. Now, listen to this. I have talked about accountability, I have talked about economic coldness, I have talked about preparation. The last dimension of faithfulness is called commitment. Commitment. Kenya has people who are not committed to anything. And they do things out of sheer preference. May I tell you, there's a difference between preference and conviction. The best commitment that you will see that lasts through a person's lifetime is that coming out of conviction. Because if it's preference, when situations change, your actions change. And so I'm charging you, this is an institution whereby you have been given biblical values, biblical principles. May you go out there as committed stewards of the life of Christ. Amen. So that Christ is glorified in everything that you do. By our light, illuminated by God and the word of God, our contact will demonstrate the existence of that light in us. And so we can be able to shine that light into a darkened world. That is what God is expecting of us. As a people with the light of God in us, being the light of the world, let your light shine before all people. And when that light is shining, it is going to be reflected in the good works. Yes. Spirit-inspired good works. But to do good works, you need an anointing. And that is why Acts, as I end, chapter 10, verse yeah, you, you, you see the description of Jesus Christ saying how he went about everywhere doing good. Why? Because the Spirit of God was upon him. So for you to do good, you need an intimacy, a relationship that is deep with the Spirit of God. So that that anointing for you to perpetually do good is reflected in you. I am Raising these things because they are critical components of transformational discipleship. Amen. And you are being sent out there, not just to engage and show people what they need to do, you are also disciplers. Yes. And you need to be transformational disciplers, whose minds have totally been altered in their thinking patterns because of the renewal of the Holy Spirit. And so I look forward to a time when we will receive students from here, the diploma holders coming, and I will receive them with great alacrity that they are coming to do a degree. Yes. And that they'll end up in my class and I'll teach them a course called critical and creative thinking. <laughs> and they'll never forget that. So I'll build on, on what has already been done here. So we are waiting. And please make those applications in big numbers. We will enter into institutional arrangements with this great institution of God so that we can realize this. We will be able to train you all the way to PhD because we have a PhD in leadership and we have a PhD in theology. We have a master of organizational leadership so many courses you can choose from. You cannot exhaust the many. And so I am here to inspire you and encourage you. It does not matter what age you are. You know the minister, Henry Kosky, Honorable Former Minister Henry Kosky? He is our student at IM. You know Aisha Juma, Honorable Aisha Juma? Right now she's 
and therefore on behalf of my vice chancellor, I make this pronouncement, enticing you and inspiring you to come quickly. We are waiting for you, and we are going to create the appropriate infrastructure to make sure that your continuity is trouble free. So thank you very much for listening to me and congratulations once again. Professor Leadership and Governance at the uh, International Leadership University invited to represent a guest of honor, Dr. Benjamin Musoka, who is the Vice Chancellor of the International Leadership University. And coming to officiate during this particular event, I am impressed with the philosophy of driving the whole exercise and the range of programs that are based on biblical principles and practices in uh, bring about transformation in the nation. It is equipping the people with skills of engaging society, so it is actually growing into a kind of movement, and therefore the courses are extremely relevant, which I would encourage people in this part of the region and elsewhere in Kenya to be able to come and benefit from the kind of transformative program which is being defined here. In fact, uh, I would say that this is a program of its own kind and therefore it is something that is going to benefit society because we are looking for agents of change who will build people not just in knowledge but also in character. And therefore, this is an institution that is a boom to the Kenyan nation and therefore an invitation to as many Kenyans as possible to come over here is something that uh, I long to see. And we are proud to be in partnership with this institution because my own university, the National Leadership University, is training people, developing them into leaders of integrity. So they are, it is a, a Christian institution which values God-centeredness and therefore we have many things in common so it was my pleasure to come and preside over this. I have learned a lot from the speeches made and even the appreciation that is being made by the students. These are eye-opening.